So, what is big data? In simple terms, big data is any data that has these three characteristics. First, it is big, typically in terabytes or even petabytes. It is varied. It could be a traditional database. It could be video data, log data, text data, or even voice data. And finally, it keeps increasing as new data keeps flowing in. The ability to harness such data for better decision making is critical in today's world because of the sheer potential it holds. Big data is most prevalent in consumer centric industries that typically generate large volumes of data. Think about industries like consumer products such as Procter and Gamble, credit card and insurance companies, e-commerce companies like Amazon, Netflix and Flipkart travel and leisure, and public utilities such as electricity and water. Big data is also becoming increasingly important in industries such as telecom, media and entertainment, education and healthcare. Within each of these industries, big data can be applied to various functions. Imagine how big data can help marketing. They can use social media analysis to understand customer needs or in supply chain management through GPS data analysis or in finance by controlling fraud or manufacturing by linking operations within the supply chain for better optimization. You may be thinking that's all fine, but what makes big data tick? What technologies constitute big data? Let's look at a couple of them in a little more detail. Big data technologies. Big data as a term refers not only to massive data sets, but also to the group of technologies that enable its analysis. So technology is an important part of big data. This is why anyone looking to learn about big data will find themselves very quickly surrounded by a number of very strange names, referring to even stranger technologies. Big data seems to have more than its fair share of languages, platforms and frameworks. It can be difficult for a beginner to understand the exact role that each of these technologies play in big data analysis. Some of them complement each other, some are based on others, and some are just substitutes of others. Let's familiarize ourselves with the various big data technologies and how they connect with each other. Let's start with MapReduce. To understand the beginning of big data technology, we will need to go back to 2004 when two Googlers, Sanjay Ghemavat and Jeffrey Dean wrote a paper that described how Google used the divide and conquer approach to deal with its gigantic databases. This approach involves breaking a task into smaller subtasks and then working on subtasks in parallel, which is extremely efficient. This approach, which they called MapReduce, forms the basis of some of the most popular big data technologies today. Open source software enthusiast Doug Cutting was one of the guys deeply inspired by this Google paper. Doug had been working on creating an open source search engine and had been struggling with scale. He was able to scale his engine to process a couple of hundred million web pages, but the requirement was for something 10,000 to 100,000 times faster than this. This is the computing power Google generates when it processes the trillions of web pages in existence. Doug realized that the MapReduce framework was ideal for processing such large amounts of data. For the next two years, Doug and his partner went about creating an open source file system and processing framework that later came to be known as Hadoop. While the original Google file system was based on C++, Doug's Hadoop was based on Java. Doug and his partner were now able to put together 30 to 40 computers and run Hadoop on this cluster. Using Hadoop and its underlying MapReduce framework, Doug was able to significantly enhance the processing capability of Nudge. So much so that it generated interest from another search engine giant, Yahoo. Yahoo could see great potential in Hadoop and wanted to build out this open source technology. Doug wanted a chance to work on clusters that had tens of thousands of machines instead of just 40. Doug then joined Yahoo. 
It took years of hard work, not just from Yahoo, but also from the global open source community to get Hadoop to where it is now, the most popular open source big data solution for businesses. Over time, other companies such as Microsoft, Intel, Cloudera, and EMC have all created their own versions of Hadoop and offer customized solutions on these platforms. Pick. As Hadoop began to be implemented on a larger scale, big data specialists soon realized that they were wasting far too much time on writing MapReduce queries rather than actually analyzing any data. MapReduce was long and time consuming to write. Developers at Yahoo soon came out with a workaround, PIG. PIG is essentially an easier way to write MapReduce queries. It is similar to Python and allows for shorter and more efficient code to be written that can then be translated to MapReduce before execution. Hive. While this solved the problem for a large number of people, there were many who still found PIG difficult to learn. SQL is a language that most developers are familiar with and hence people at Facebook decided to create Hive, an alternative to PIG. Hive enables code to be written in Hive query language or HQL that, as the name suggests, is very similar to SQL. So there's now an option. If you are familiar with Python, use PIG to write code. If you have knowledge of SQL, then Hive. In either case, we get away from the time-consuming job of writing MapReduce queries. So far, we've looked at four of the most popular big data technologies, MapReduce, Hadoop, PIG, and Hive. Let's now get introduced to database technologies, popularly used in big data. First, we need to understand the concept of NoSQL databases. NoSQL. NoSQL refers to databases that do not follow the traditional tabular structure. NoSQL databases are used to handle data which does not fit into a traditional table-like format such as text data or graphs or images. There are a number of NoSQL database technologies that work well for specific data problems. HBase is an open source NoSQL database that runs on the Hadoop distributed file system. HBase is well suited for handling sparse datasets. For example, if your task was to identify the 100 most expensive items from a set of a billion, HBase will do this efficiently for you. Cassandra is another NoSQL database developed in Facebook by ex-Amazon engineers Avinash Lakshman and Prashant Malik. While HBase is modeled on Google's Bigtable, Cassandra is inspired by Amazon's DynamoDB. Cassandra offers SQL-like querying via its own language called CQL, thus making it easier to use for developers used to working with traditional databases. Cassandra is best used when your data does not fit your server, so you are forced to store it in a NoSQL database, but with a familiar interface to it. Things like transaction logging or sensor data collection can leverage Cassandra effectively. CouchDB is another NoSQL database that is best used for data that does not change often and on which predefined queries need to be run. An example is the CRM data for a retailer. MongoDB is an alternative to CouchDB when your data changes very often and where your queries are more dynamic rather than being predefined. Scoop, as the name suggests, is a tool that transfers data between traditional SQL databases and Hadoop. It is used by many businesses that need to move the data stored in their databases to the Hadoop framework. Microsoft uses a Scoop-based connector to transfer data from Microsoft SQL Server databases to Hadoop and back. Database technologies enable efficient storage and processing of data. Big data specialists also require specialized technologies to perform analytics on big data. Mahout. This is where technologies like Mahout come in. Mahout is a collection of algorithms that enable machine learning to be performed on Hadoop databases. If you were looking to perform clustering, classification, or collaborative filtering on your data, Mahout will help you do that. 
E-commerce companies and retailers have a frequent need to perform tasks like clustering and collaborative filtering on their data, and Mahout is a great choice for this. Impala is another technology that enables analytics on big data. Impala is a query language that allows big data specialists to perform analytics on data stored on Hadoop via SQL or other BI tools. Impala has been developed and promoted by Cloudera. So this was a quick overview of the popular big data technologies. 